Eight years, it's a long time, Gulf. Are you sure you're going to recognise him? It's not the sort of face you forget. I'm surprised Mr Meadows sanctioned this. Why? Well, even if we catch him dividing up the ransom, there's no arrest in it. They've served their time. Most we can do is confiscate the money. 300 grand? That's a lot to let them get away with, isn't it? There you go, that's him. Beach from Proctor. Go ahead, Tom. That's Tully. Affirmative. Don't get too close. Sit down. You should have turned on the siren and the flashing blue light. Make yourself a little more conspicuous. It's a big word for you. You must be working in the prison library. Heck, he told me you pestered him when he came out. Well, I'm telling you the same thing he told you. The money has gone. Now leave me alone! That's criminal damage. Oh, God, then arrest me. I've just done eight years. Do you think I'm worried about a few extra hours for criminal damage? Come on, God, forget it. Take it. What happened? He made us. He was looking for us. Just goes to show he's got Sammy to hide. You and Tom go back to the base. Gov. What are we going to do? We're going to go and have a chat with Hackett. What do you want me to tell the governor? Nothing, unless you have to. Gov. How come you managed to arrest Hackett and Tully, but you didn't recover the ransom money? Each of them said the other one had hidden the money and that they didn't know where it was. How can you be so sure either of them have still got it? Because the ransom money was paid in used notes. We circulated the serial numbers to all the banks and building societies, and in the eight years that Tully's been in Nick, not one of them's turned up. You've kept tabs on them all that time. Some might say that was a little obsessive. Hello. That's girlfriend. To a vehicle check. Sierra Oscar from WDC Homes receiving. Go ahead, Kerry. Vehicle check, please, Polly. Uh, it's an MR2, registration Delta 28, Echo Yankee November. Over. Stand by. WDC Homes from Sierra Oscar, receiving. Over. Go ahead, Polly. Read your vehicle check. Last registered keeper shown at the Karen Mallet, 15 Asquith Road. One previous conviction for possession with intent to supply, 1991. Over. Received. Hello. Hello. Richard. Remember me? Detective Inspector Deakin from Sun Hill. This is WDC Homes. I'm not interested in joining the neighbourhood watch, if that's what you're after. Well, if I was in charge of preventing crime, this would be a very good place to start. Can I come in? seen the last of you when I come out. What have you been up to? Nothing need concern you. Oh, don't tell me you've become a model citizen. That's right. I don't even drop litter in the streets anymore. That's very nice. You have done well. It's all on the never never. And it's my fiance's. What do you want? You heard from Tully? No. And I don't want to hear from him. The man's a psychopath. Part of my life is over. Don't think Tully's going to see it like that. Why? I haven't seen each other for years. Not since they ghosted him one morning from Parkhurst. Well, it's not you he's interested in, is it? Not the money. You're not still looking for that. I told you before, it's all gone. Really? Then Tully's going to be a bit upset to find out that you spent it. He got his share. Then he must still have it. I can't have spent it. It's been inside for the past eight years. Well, you'll have to ask him about that. Don't worry, we will. And while I'm about it, I'll pass on your regards. Tully will be delighted to know that we've been in touch all these years. Why can't you just leave me alone? I did my time. I don't want anything to do with you or Tully. <sighs> Look, if I knew what he did with his share of the money, I'd tell you 
but I don't. I haven't got time to muck about, Hackett, so I'm going to put this in language that you can understand. Tully is out, and he's going to collect his share of the money. And one way or another, I'm going to be there when he does. Now, either he can think that he led me to the money, or I will tell him that you pointed out the way. It doesn't matter to me. It's up to you. Hello? Speaking? Frank! When'd you get out? Oh, really? Stay tuned. <laughs> They've been here, yeah. Yeah, anyway, you know me, I'd send them away with a flea in their ear. Yeah, okay. When? All right, I'll see you then. Yeah, bye. Where is he? He's at his mother's. Lucky he didn't come round, we could have had a nice family reunion. Oh, yeah. Goldilocks and the three bears, then Daddy Bear would have come round, kicked the crap out of all of us. This is fair. Oh, well, you tell that to the girl you kidnapped. And I wonder what Tully's gonna say when I tell him that we were here when he phoned and you didn't tell him about it. Where's the money? It's in a safety deposit box. Tully's got one key. I've got the other. You need both keys to open it. Where? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not telling you that until I get some guarantees. If I help you, you have to promise me Tully won't find out. I don't want that nutcase after me. My involvement has to be unofficial, off the record. Okay. Where's the safety deposit box? It's in the security depot, Brim Road, Barmonts. When's Tully coming round? Tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. We got your key. It's in here. Right. I'll nick you and Tully as you come out of Barman's tomorrow morning. I'll take you straight to Sun Hill. That way Tully won't be suspicious. And I'll make sure that he thinks he's the one who's led me to the money. Any change of plan, I want you to give me a ring. Now, I'm watching the pair of you, so no funny business. But uh, what about my fiance? What about her? Karen doesn't know anything about the money. You've got some explaining to do then, haven't you? It's definitely one of ours. But I can't open it for you. We only want to verify its contents. Oh, sorry, Inspector. It's a question of confidentiality. That's what our customers pay for. Let's be honest. Half our clients have probably got something tucked away they don't want the authorities to find out about. That's why they come here in the first place. We're talking about a serious crime, Mr. Carson. Kidnapping. I can't open a client's box without their permission. Not without a court order or a search warrant. I take it you don't have a search warrant? No. Sorry. Talk to Don. So Hackers agreed to cooperate? Yeah. Well, that should simplify things. The security depot opens tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Tully's agreed to meet Hackett round at Hackett's girlfriend. So what did you dig up on the girlfriend? She works in a travel agency in the high street. She was arrested in Spain in 1991 whilst working as a rep for a holiday company. She got caught selling amphetamines and cannabis to British holidaymakers. She served 12 months and then they deported her. The Spanish authorities seemed to think that the drugs originated in the UK, so the drug squad kept an eye on her for a while, but nothing came of it. Still, she could be a sleeper. She could have learned a lesson. Uh, 12 months in a Spanish jail can't have been much fun. You've got to make sure the money's in the security depot. I've got... I've already asked them about that, and uh, they refuse to cooperate on the grounds of client's confidentiality. So when were you going to tell me that? Or weren't you going to bother? The money's there, Gov. I'll lay odds on it. If Hackett had the money, he'd be living it up now on the Costa del Sol. The only reason he's still here is because he can't get his hands on the dodge. Get a search warrant. Um, uh, Gov. I promised Hackett that his corporation will remain off the record. Without his involvement, we won't have enough for a warrant. I thought this was a simple operation. It's becoming like the Millennium Dome. Are there any other surprises that I should know about? No. What about Hackett? Can you trust him? He'll be fine, as long as he knows we keep the nine. Well, get close enough to leave him in no doubt. I thought you weren't coming back till the morning. There's been a change of plan. Karen will be home any second. Does Tully know you're engaged to Karen? Yeah. Has he ever met her? No, of course not. Spoken on the phone to her? 
No. Why? Tomorrow morning, Kerry's going to be here. When Tully arrives, you're going to introduce her as your fiance. What? She's going to go to the security depot with you. Tully's going to love that. You just have to convince him it's a good idea. Well, how am I supposed to do that? You think of something. It's Karen. Just give me a minute. What well, if he's right, Gov, and Tully doesn't want me tagging along? Just have to leave him no alternative. Look, please sit here. Why? There's been a change of plan. I'll explain later. <clears throat> this is Karen. Um, I called her this afternoon to explain what was going on. Uh, this is WDC Holmes. <laughs> What's that make you? Dr. Watson. Deakin. Detective Inspector Deakin. They want Kerry to pose as my fiance when Frank gets here in the morning. And where am I supposed to be whilst all this is happening? You're at work, aren't you? Oh, am I? And um, what if I don't want to go to work tomorrow? What if I decide to take the day off? Richard has agreed to cooperate. This is my house, not his. I haven't agreed to anything. <laughs> so you won't help us? Why should I? Because if you don't, I'll have to assign officers to keep an eye on all of you. Maybe even send one to the travel agents where you work. And who knows what they would say to your colleagues. I take it they do know about your criminal record. That was all a long time ago. And that's the best place for it, isn't it? In the past, where it belongs. What time do you normally start work? Eight o'clock. Well, just go to work as you would normally, and when you come back, it'll all be over and done with. It won't work. You're not even his type. You're too skinny. I've seen more meat on a pencil. I'm sure we'll manage. Besides, Tully's been inside for the last eight years. I'm sure it won't be too difficult to convince him that Richard's taste's improved. See you in the morning. There's no need to fight. It's more than enough for me to go round. Don't flatter yourself. Go on. Go off. I'm just going to drop Kerry off, and then I'm going to shoot over to the security depot and have a word with the manager. Make sure he doesn't drop her in it when she comes up with Tully. Go. Talk about walking into the lions, then. She'll be all right. You obviously haven't seen Tully's file, have you, Thomas? The girl they kidnapped. She's lucky to be alive, you know. Tully cut off one of her fingers just to make sure the old man paid up. Shouldn't you be on your way to work? Don't worry. I'm going. It's your new fiance. All right, Kerry. Come to tea. Hmm. Are you sure you know where the kettle is? Away, woman. Go on, get to work. Right. I'll leave you two lovebirds to it. I'll call you later. All right. Bye. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Well, that doesn't rule out very much. I'll stick the kettle on. I'm just going to have a look around. What for? Well, I am supposed to live here. It would help if I knew the layout of the house. I'd hate to tell Tully the toilet was the first on the left and watch him walk into the broom cupboard. <laughs> Brains as well as beauty. I can see I'm going to enjoy being engaged to you. Inspector? David Webster. I'm the assistant manager. What can I do for you? I was hoping to speak to Mr. Castle, actually. Oh, well, I'm afraid he's not here today. Can I help? I hope you haven't been rooting through my drawers up there. I'll be frisking you before you leave. This isn't a game, you know. Life's a game. Game of luck. Chances. How can you not believe that, playing cops and robbers for a living? The good guys versus the bad guys. The Tullys of this world. And whose side are you on? I'm always on the side of the angels. Well, oh, just you remember that when Tully turns up. Don't you worry about Tully. Just got to know how to handle him. What's he going to say about me coming along for the ride? Do you drive? Yeah. Karen bought me a little run around. It's outside. I'll tell him I was done for drink driving. You've offered to give us the lift. Doesn't he drive? Not unless he's been taking lessons whilst he's been inside. 
You've got Karen wrapped around your little finger, haven't you? You know, it's not every man who'd let a woman drive his car. As pretty as you are. How long have you and Karen been together? About 18 months, why? Just curious. Well, it all sounds very intriguing. I think to my Roger would think we shouldn't help the police. Have you got a camera in the vault? We have cameras everywhere. So I could see what was going on in the vault when they get here? Yes. Come on, Kerry. Kerry, love. Tully's here. OK. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, big man. Come through, meet the missus. Hey, you lost a bit of weight. You've not been eating your porridge. <clears throat> this is uh, Karen, my fiance. Hello, Frank. It's nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. You don't want to believe anything he's told you. He's a liar. I know he is. Isn't she an angel? Must be the luckiest man in the world. She's going to give us a lift down the security depot. Aren't you? Aren't you, darling? I thought I told you to keep your mouth shut. Well, there's no secrets between husband and wives. Besides, he can't drive. Not since he lost his licence. I got pulled over by the short arm of the law. Some fat little fellow on a motorbike. <laughs> Looked like a lollipop man. So, either I drive you, or you're coming home on the bus with 150 grand in your pocket. You don't have to get too close. We know where they're going, all right? D.I.D. came from D.S. Beach. Go ahead, Don. We're on our way, Gov. Should be with you in about ten minutes. Received. What's the matter, Frank? I'm making sure we're not being followed. So, what are you going to do now you're out? I think of something. Something legal, I hope. What's it got to do with you? Nothing. You've just spent the last eight years in prison. You don't want to do something silly and end up back inside, do you? Frank's old enough to look after himself, aren't you, Frank? So why did you get eight years when Richard only got four? Only? You make it sound like a holiday. I got the blame for what happened to the girl. What are you talking about? The finger? You cut it off, Frank, not me. It wasn't my idea. It doesn't matter whose idea it was. You did the deed. The girl pointed the finger at you. She would have done if you hadn't chopped it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. All right, all right. <laughs> Sorry. So you got Frank to do all your dirty work? That's right. Whose side are you on? You know, you can only push me so far. Sorry you got the blame for it, Frank. I'm sorry you got a longer sentence. At the time, it had to be done. Besides, there's only one finger. You don't need a full compliment. Push buttons on her till. It's not as if she was a concert pianist. <laughs> anyway, you didn't get a longer sentence for what you did to the girl. You got eight years for shooting at Deacon. C.I. Deacon from DS Beach. Receiving? Go ahead, Don. We're outside Barmont's now, Gov. They're just turning into the car park. Yep, OK, I've got them turning in now. You know what you're doing? Yeah, no problem. These are dangerous people we're dealing with. OK. Hey! You wait here. Why? Because I said so. OK, but you're going to find it pretty hard to open your precious safety deposit box with only one key. What are you talking about? She's got my key. He owes me a small fortune. Who do you think's been supporting him for the past 18 months? And if you think I'm going to let him walk in there without me, you can think again. 
Give me the key. What's she playing at? I said, give it to me. You cause a scene in here, and they'll call the police. And if they don't, I will. Beach from... Go ahead, Gov. Leave Tom out there and come inside, over. Proceed. Gov. Don. You must be chuffed, Gov. Eight years, it's a long time. I can't wait to see the look on Tully's face when he gets outside and sees us waiting for him. There's a buzzer by the door. Just press it when you're finished. Thank you. If you do the honours, I'll open the back. Sierra Oscar from DSB. Get your people out of here now. Urgent message. ARV required. Immediately at Barmont Security, Brim Road. Go and stand over there, please. Stand over there. Quickly now. Just over there. Where is the money? Don't be silly, Frank. This has got nothing to do with you! Be a good girl, keep out of it. It's between me and him! I won't ask you again! Honest to God, Frank. Don't know where it is! <laughs> the only ones who knew about the box were me and you! And the people who worked here! We've both been ripped off! Maybe we should let him know we're here. Okay, get down and get as close as you can. Guff. Someone here must have taken it! No one else knew! She knew. Don't be stupid, Frank! Don't call me stupid! All right, I didn't mean it like that! She doesn't know where the money is! I will have to kill both of you if it comes to it! Come on, you're not going to shoot anyone! I'm going to count to three. One. Two. Tell him where it is. Three. Go, Don! Go! Don't just stand there! Come on, it's what is for me to do? What do you think? <laughs> Quick! Calm down! I'll take it! I'm wrestling you out! I'm You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on. Don't be stupid! She's not going to press charges! Don't, any... Don't worry about it, Frank! We'll sort it! Whoa, 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 whoa. It's over. It's all over. I promise you, Mr. Dickon, on my life, I don't know. It has to be someone who works here, on the inside. He reckons the manager knew what was in the box. He was suspicious when we first opened the account. When we were arrested, our pictures were in the papers a lot. He could have recognised us. Wouldn't it have taken a genius to work out what was in the box? Keep an eye on him. Gov. I take my hat off to you, though. It's not every woman would have tackled Tully like that. Why didn't you tell us there was a gun in the box? I've forgotten all about it. Besides, I knew it was empty. That's an assault. So's that, for your behaviour back at the house. 
Has anyone ever told you you're beautiful when you're angry? I need to speak to your boss, Mr. Carson. You got his address? Yes, of course. But I don't think he'll be there. He'll be on his way to the airport by now. Why? Where's he going? Spain. Yeah. What time's his yeah. flight? Oh, I think he said he was leaving at about 12. Oh, his secretary will never do it. Where is she? Over there. Well, why? Is it important? I'm in charge in his absence. So if there's anything to do with the depot, I'll be able to help. I need to speak to him personally. Was he due to go on holiday? No, he wasn't. He said he got a last minute cancellation. Gee. Susan, Susan, this is uh, Detective Inspector Deacon. Susan? Hello. What time was Mr. Carson's flight due to leave? 11 o'clock. Oh, 11, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. What about Hackett, Gov? Take him back to the station. Don't let him out of your sight. I don't want him on the loose till we found the money. Okay. Can I go now? Now, I want you to go back to the station. Why? Well, you witnessed the assault on WDC Holmes there. We need you to make a statement. Go on. Gov. So what's going on? I hear you call for an ARV. This was going to be a quiet, low-key operation. It's turned into a three-ring circus. There was a gun in the deposit box. You all right, Kelly? I'm fine, Gov. The gun wasn't loaded. Well, at least tell me you've recovered the money. It looks as if the depot manager's done a runner with it. Well, they're off to the airport now to pick him up. I'll tell you, you don't need us, then. Uh, no. I'm oh, sorry, lads. I think you've wasted enough time on this already. You can't just let him get away with it. Well, he won't. Not with Tully gunning for him. But his flight leaves in an hour. That's plenty of time. I'll give you till one of the latest. You come back up down, did? That's it. You could have told me Tully took a shot at you. What difference would that have made? At least I'd have known what he was capable of. Well, now you do. Frank Tully, Sarge. He's been arrested for assault. Didn't take you long to find your way back, Frank. You sit there, I won't be long. Bridge! Keep an eye on him, will you? If he tries to leave, shoot him. We'll do it, Sergeant. You all right? Can you stop the car? been loaded, I'd be dead. Welcome to the club. If he'd been a better shot, I wouldn't be here either. What happened? We went to make the arrest at six o'clock in the morning. We kicked the door in and he came out shooting. He slept with a gun under his pillow. Fuck, he was still half asleep. Hardly fair, is it? I look death in the face, he walks away with an assault charge. Still, he did eight years for the shot he took at you. That's not enough. Not for someone like Tully, not at his age. The only way you're going to hurt him is by getting rid of the spoils. The money? Yep. You fit? It's good to depart just to see if you can find out what gate his flight's leaving from. I'll go to Cousins and Immigration to see if he's airside already. I haven't got anything to stop and search him, so I might need your help if he doesn't cooperate. No problem. Once he's entered the airport, he's under our jurisdiction and we can search him. Kerry, have you seen him? This guy is just down by the gate. There he is. Mr. Carson, do you remember me, Detective Inspector Deacon from Sun Hill? This is WDC Kerry Holmes, Eric Joby, Customs and Excise. Come with me back, please. Why? It won't take a minute. Yeah, my, my flight's been called. Yeah, there's plenty of time. Is this all the luggage ever with you? Yes. Down it. What? We're going to hit that. Oh. Celebration. Ha. <laughs> I don't know what you're expecting to find. Some money's gone missing from one of the safety deposit boxes back at the depot. And do you think I had something to do with it? We're talking about a lot of money. I wouldn't open a customer's box without them being present. Satisfied? Have you booked any other baggage onto the plane? No. The baggage tags will be within the ticket if he has. Where's your ticket? Do you mind? Help yourself. Did you pack this bag yourself? Yes. Go. 
What's the matter? You booked your ticket through the Deerbrook Travel Agency. So? You know the manager there? Karen Mallet? No. You sure about that? I, I didn't even make the booking. My secretary did it for me. Hello. What have we got in? Nylon Hawaiian shirt. On suntan lotion, factor 35. Four packets of contraceptives. Doesn't look like you've been eating these. Chris. Gov. One packet of photographs. Did you find them on I found this instead. He was travelling on a ticket provided by Hackett's girlfriend. So what you're saying, they set up business together? That's a possibility. Well, this is eight grounds worth. Where's the rest of it? So far, he won't admit to knowing either of them, but I've not had a chance to have a go at him yet. Well, if they turn the whole 300 grounds worth into age, you've got to turn it over to the drug squad. Sponge. Gov. Gov. I found these in his case. Where's Hackett? Reception. Has he made his statement yet? Not yet. Where's Tom? Upstairs. Get hold of him and go over to the travel agents. See if you can find if Karen Mallet is still there. Mallet, Carson or Hackett. One of them knows where the money is and I want to keep tabs on them if I can. What is it? How much longer are you going to keep me here? That depends on what? How much noise you make. The louder you get, the longer you stay. Why don't you just go on with it? Charge me and stop wasting my time! I'll let you go when I'm good and ready. Oh, Frank. There's somebody here I'd like you to meet. This is Mr Carson. He's the manager at Barmont Securities. Now, I'm going to be questioning Mr Carson about the disappearance of your money just as soon as this solicitor gets here. Come on. In you go. Don't worry, his bike's worse than his bike, isn't it? If you say so. I won't be in here forever! And you won't be difficult to find, Carson! <sighs> She's there. So, so what do we do now? We wait here. I've got you something to read. Moscow? Russian shop putters in bikinis. Didn't want you getting too excited. Thank you, madam. Hey, excuse me. Aren't you supposed to be waiting to make a statement? Tell Deacon my ass got numb sitting on these chairs. <clears throat> yeah, but he'll be down in a minute. You said that half an hour ago. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yes, you're holding one of my clients, Roger Carson. Oh, yes, sir. If you'd like to take a seat, I'll let the custody sergeant know that you're here. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'll be five minutes. I need to talk to you. Is that the manager's solicitor out there? I don't know. Why? I recognise the name of the person he's come to see. Roger Carson. I can't discuss an ongoing investigation. So it is him. Did you find the money? Come on, I need to know. This is not about the money anymore. What is it about? I used to help out in the travel agent sometimes when they were busy. Karen was always getting calls from someone called Carson. I used to think it was just a client, but I was also a bit suspicious about how friendly she was with him. Is there something going on between them? Well, no, till I'm asking. But it's the same fella. Yeah. So how do you think the heroin got into your suitcase? I told you, I don't know. And you don't know Karen Mallet? No. Karen Mallet is the lady who runs the travel agency where you bought your ticket for Spain. Well, I may have spoken to her on the phone when I booked my ticket, but I don't know her. I thought you said your secretary booked your ticket. She did. Well, I made the initial inquiries, then once I'd arranged to take time off, she confirmed the booking. Ask her if you don't believe me. 
We did. For the benefit of the tape, I am now showing Mr Carson exhibit KH1, a photograph that we took from his suitcase earlier on. Are you in that photograph, Mr Carson? Yes. And who is the woman in the picture with you? The woman with her arm round your neck. Karen Manning. So why did you say you didn't know her? She's got a boyfriend. They're engaged. Do you know who the boyfriend is? Yeah, he's been in prison. Karen's scared to death of him. That's why we've tried to keep the relationship a secret. She was afraid of what he might do if he found out. So why the dash to Spain? We wanted to get away as far as possible. Karen's got friends over there. She, she was going to follow on a later flight. She just needed time to cover her tracks so he wouldn't be able to find her. What were you going to live on? The money from the deposit box or the proceeds from the drugs that you bought with it? I don't know what you're talking about. I told you I wouldn't open a client's box. And I don't know anything about drugs. So how do you explain the heroin being in your suitcase? I don't know. Maybe he put it there. Who? Well, Karen's fiancé, Hackett. He could have found out about us and planted the drugs in my case. He's a criminal. He, he must know all sorts of people. He's bound to know someone who'd be able to get hold of drugs. He's not the only one. What do you mean? I don't know anything about drugs. Do you think Karen does? No. How old are you, Mr Carson? 44. And Karen Mallett's what? 28, 29? 28. So? What on earth do you think she sees in here? You're not exactly Robert Redford, are you? There's no need to get personal, Constable. Sorry. Do you love her? Yes. And you think she loves you? Yes. Of course she does. Cheers, Paul. Check with the airline, and then have a word with the Spanish police at Malaga. I'll go and break the news to lover boy. We're supposed to be getting married. Must be blind. Sorry, mate. So did they take the money? I don't know yet. I've been sitting here thinking. All sorts of things been going through my mind. I should have said something earlier, but that's before I realised there's something going on between them. I lied to you. What about? Yesterday, I told you Karen didn't know anything about the money. She did. I told her ages ago. I was just trying to keep her out of it. She's paranoid about anyone at work finding out about a conviction. I didn't want you going round there. How much do you know about her conviction? Come on. Do you know if Karen is still in touch with the people she was working with when she was convicted? I don't know. She might have stayed in touch. You don't know who her supplier was? No. He was based in England. He wanted Spanish. And Karen was convicted for supplying, not trafficking. Do you know how she got the drugs into Spain? This is what she told me. I don't know whether it's true. She used to arrange free trips for friends, cheap flights, free accommodation, that sort of thing. She'd be in Spain, they'd be over here. She'd tell them she'd forgotten something, ask them to bring it over to her. Be the least they could do if she was arranging a free holiday for them. Drugs were hidden inside whatever it was they were bringing over. They didn't know a thing about it. All right. When was Karen going to join you in Spain? Tomorrow. There's no booking on any flight to Spain tomorrow in her name. I checked. She doesn't have to book in advance. She runs a travel agent. She can get a flight whenever she wants. I also spoke to Interpol. The Spanish police would have been waiting for you at the airport at Malaga. Apparently they'd received a tip-off that you'd be carrying drugs. The tip-off came from an English woman who spoke very good Spanish. No. She wouldn't do that to me. You knew Karen had worked in Spain? Yes. If you're implying that Mr Carson has been duped by this woman, then perhaps you should be speaking to her. And you should release my client immediately. Just because he might have been tricked into carrying the heroin doesn't mean that he didn't help purchase it with money from the deposit box. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about drugs. I'd like a moment to confer with my client. Interview terminated at 12.25. Even if he tells us Karen's got the money, 
We're still no closer to getting our hands on it. All she has to do is deny it. We can't force her to tell us where it is. We can't. Why don't we let Matthew know that we're ready to release Tully? Tully will go berserk. He won't find Hackett, will he? He's out the front and that's in a broken heart. He can't touch Carl's. What about Karen? It's about time those two met. Let Karen know what she's up against. Do you think that's wise, Gov? All Tully has to do is threaten her and it's another chance to add to the list, isn't it? Yeah, but what if he does more than threaten her? Whose side are you on? Inspector, my client is prepared to talk to you now. Kerry? You with us? Karen's got the money. She said that Tully would be in prison for years and by the time he got out we'd be well gone. Even if they knew we'd taken the money they wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Well, they could hardly report the theft to the police, could they? Karen called me yesterday, just before you arrived. She said that Tully had been released and we needed to get out of the country as fast as possible. She set you up. And she'll get away with it. Unless you help us. Me? What can I do? Sarge, we're ready to release Tully now. Are you sure? That's all and all. Hello. Is uh, Karen there? Roger. Roger. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. Sign in, please. At the police station. Are you I might have known your role, Bill. Show Mr. Tully out with you, John. So, Hackett stitched me up, did he? Thank you, John. Yeah? No, I'm, uh, I'm in an office on my own, there next door. No, I haven't said anything. Right. Bye. She's going to get me a solicitor. Did she ask what police station you're at? No. Then how does she know where to send the solicitor? Or is she psychic? Looks like we're under starter's orders. Right, all right, we'll be there in about ten minutes. Tully's just been released, so keep an eye out for him just in case. You see? Yeah, look, and don't go near Karen until you're sure she's got the money. Now what? We just sit here till Chris Deacon arrives, or she leaves. How much longer is the DI going to want us to chase this one? However long it takes God. to catch his... Come on. DRD came from DS Beach. Are you receiving? Where is it? Go ahead, Don. We're it? going in. Looks like Tully's already here. Where is the money? I don't know. Where is the money? Let her go. Don't be stupid. Come on, get in there. Somebody tough with it. Got you just in time. Come on. To look it! He's a dead man! Fortunately. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want us to call an ambulance? I'm all right. Where's the money? I don't know where it is. I suppose you don't know anything about the drugs in Carson's luggage either? No. Carson told us that he opened the safety deposit box and gave you the money, Karen. You can't prove it, though, can you? What are you going to do? <laughs> Arrest us. I'll charge you with handling. Us? 
Me and Carson. You mean you and Hackett. Do you know where Hackett is now? He's at Sun Hill. And he must have gone there to find out if Carson had got out of the country. Do you want to know what he did when he found out that we'd arrested him? He spent the rest of the afternoon pointing the finger at you. You must think I was born yesterday. You used Carson the same way that you used your friends when you worked in Spain. Cheap flights, free accommodation, and then all of a sudden I've forgotten something. Could you just pop round and pick it up? And in that something would be the drugs. Now how would I have known that if Hackett hadn't told me? After what I did for him with Gus. Have you any idea where the money might be? It can't be far away. It was in the wardrobe yesterday when you came round. You laughed about it, said it was right under your noses and you didn't even know it. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Tully, Sarge. In for assault. Again. Two assaults in one day. You after some kind of record? Why didn't Hackett take the money when he first got out of prison? Why wait until Tully was released? I suppose he needed to find someone stupid enough to whine and dine Carson. And it seemed like a good idea to finish the job. Let Tully think Carson had taken the money. So why put the drugs in his luggage? Because with Carson in a Spanish prison, Tully'd give up the chase. You had it all worked out, didn't you? It wasn't my idea. Richard had it all worked out. I was just another one of the pawns in the game. Just like you. Like three of us. Great. Just what I need. I want to talk to you. I'll go home, Roger. Why did you do it? Lots of reasons. 300,000 to be precise. You took your time. Don't you start. Take his statement and then get rid of him. What's the matter with him? In there. He's hacked off because he hasn't found the money, and our DCI won't let him waste any more time looking for it. Right. Um, hang on. W what about Karen and Carson? Karen was using Carson as a decoy. She set him up with the drugs, and then tipped off the Spanish police. So you've arrested her, eh? She's disappeared. We don't know where she is. Thought you were keeping an eye on her. We tried. She'd already gone. One of the girls at the agency said she had some travellers' checks and a passport with her. With her contact, she could be anywhere. You sure? We checked the house. Most of her stuff seems to have gone. The place is a right mess. What, what do you mean? It's been turned upside down. We suspect it was Tully looking for the money. I'm sorry. But I do need to take your statement. Um, look, this is... It's all come as a bit of a shock. Um, I can't get my head around it right now. Can we, can we do this some other time? Right. The ID came from DS Beach, receiving. Go ahead, Doc. Hackett's arrived, Gov. He's gone straight into the garage. There, is it? I work so hard for this. Never mind. Easy come, easy go. It's only money. Still got my brains and my charm. Oh, yeah. Aren't those really useful? Had you running round in circles long enough? 
run him around. Well, if I was you... I'll be doing a bit of that myself. Tully's at Sun Hill for now. Gives you a bit of a head start. I'll take advantage of it. Place to say Spain's nice, this time of year. 